Today we're going on a small adventure in search of colors and stains from nature. But first we need a bow. Here's a sapling of hickory, one of my favorite bow woods. Let's get it roughed out and ready to dry. Now that one side is done, we can start to rough out the thickness taper in the other side, leaving the stave wide so it doesn't warp when it dries, and then we'll send the stave to the drying box. Now this isn't the same as a hot box for curing temperature sensitive glues or a drying kiln. This is just a slightly hotter and drier environment than the rest of my shop. You don't really need one unless you live in a very humid place like I do, or you're trying to get the absolute maximum in bow performance. While this tape dries, I'll have some time to think about how I want to stain it. Now there are some pretty complicated ways to make stains. Some of them require a lot of work. Today I'm just going for the low hanging fruit. Colors you can rub into the wood directly. Today I'm looking for colors that pop. It's not the seed pod of these snapdragons I'm after though, but the flowers. They make for a really nice orange brown stain. I like using flowers, roots, and berries as direct stains because it's not much work and as you can see, it's easy to achieve a wide palette of colors. I think the standouts for the day were charcoal, cornflower blue, pokeberries, and bloodroot. So here's the plan. I'll sand the bow and then stain the whole thing with bloodroot, blending in some charcoal on the back. I'll also decorate the harmless drying check in the handle with pokeberry juice. To lock in those colors, I'll use a thin layer of shellac as resist. Then I'll take advantage of the natural interlocking ridges that occur on the back of hickory, and I'll scrape them back, leaving them white. Finally, I'll fill in those ridges with blue cornflowers and finish the whole bow with more shellac. So there it is, 70 pounds at 30 inches, 74 inches tip to tip, about as much bow as I can handle, and then some. Most people watching this channel haven't made a bow yet, so in the description of this video, there's a big list of beginner resources to help you get started right away. Plus a list of other bow making channels on YouTube you should be subscribed to. 
The bow making community is alive and thriving, and it goes back over 10,000 years. Join the others around the world and those who walk the lands before you.